Having endured the process of memorising hundreds of cases for my own law exams, I am painfully aware of how difficult it can be to commit cases to memory. Not only do they have difficult long case names, but they also have unnecessary details when it comes to the facts themselves, and law professors do nothing to actually help us to engulf this information and to break it down into useful chunks. So I'm going to teach you my process when it comes to memorising case facts and how I use this process to secure a first class degree. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Gareth and I'm a lawyer and law lecturer from Oxford in the UK. And before I learned how to memorise cases, I found the whole law exam thing pretty complicated and difficult and I always found myself scrambling around the day before the exams trying to cram all these different cases into my head. So once the actual exam paper was slapped down in front of me, I didn't actually know what the hell I was doing. I couldn't remember the cases, let alone actually succinctly analyse them and understand how to talk about them in a coherent manner. But at some point in my second year of university, I came across space repetition, which completely changed the game for me. Not only did I now have a process of remembering the cases, I could now analyse those cases properly when it came to the exam itself. And this is what I'm going to break down today. So you can skip to the parts that are most important to you. Here are the three things that I'm going to be talking about in this video. Firstly, I'm going to be mentioning the power of space repetition and why the forgetting curve is critical to acquiring new knowledge. Secondly, how you can remember and recall hundreds of cases with space repetition. And finally, I want to show you my exact two systems I used to do exactly this. Before we dive in into how we can use space repetition to enhance your case learning abilities, I want to introduce you to this guy known as Herman Ebbinghaus, who thought it would be a great idea to one day sit down and learn a long list of nonsense syllables. This experiment eventually led him to develop what is now known as the forgetting curve, which shows us how our memory decays over time. You can sort of think about it as the a graph of radioactive half-life. And in the sense that, you know, if you're learning a law case over the first 60 minutes, there's going to be a big decay in your memory retention of that particular case. But after 24 hours, it's going to level off somewhere around a 30% retention rate. If you've ever been through the process of trying to memorise a set of case facts and then just a few short hours later, all of those facts have just disappeared from your head, then that is the forgetting curve in action. Fortunately though, there is a way of slowing down this process of forgetting, and that is through coming back to those cases at regular intervals. So let's say I was studying the famous case of Donahoe and Stevenson, and I studied it one day and then the next day I revisited that particular case. Now, every time I study the case at a spaced interval, I'm refreshing my knowledge of that particular case, and therefore I'm slowing down the forgetting momentum. And over time, the more times I revisit the particular case and the more spaced out my particular revisions of that case become, I am encoding that knowledge in my long term memory. So eventually I get to a point where I never actually forget about that poor decomposing snail in the ginger beer bottle because I have ingrained that information so deeply in my mind that the forgetting curve no longer applies to that piece of information. Ebenhaus, for example, found that he could spend less time to achieve a perfect memory if he spaced out his learning over a period of time. For instance, with one list of 12 syllables, he found that he could achieve perfect memory with 68 repetitions one day and 7 repetitions the next day. However, if he spread that learning over three days, he found that he could achieve the same level of perfection with just 38 repetitions. So whereas massed practice, as you and I will probably know as cramming, usually leads to memory decay, spaced repetition will lead to memory mastery. In one 2006 study, they tested two groups of students. They told one group of students to cram for a particular test, and they told another group of students to split and space out their learning of that particular material. And by the end of the actual study, it was found that those students who had spaced out the learning of the material significantly outperformed those that had crammed. Hundreds of similar studies have been carried out, and it turns out that it's also really, really useful when it comes to studying legal cases. And that leads me on to the next part of the video. 
Now I can hear you saying that all this theory is pretty interesting, but how can I actually use this knowledge of space repetition to ensure I never forget a law case ever again? And the answer to that is to embrace forgetting and to have a personal system of review. So first, let's talk about embracing forgetting. In simple terms, it turns out that one of the most important parts to remembering cases is actually to forget them. Now, this does seem pretty counterintuitive, but the point is that if you forget something, the harder your brain has to work to retrieve it, which trains your brain to build up the necessary neural pathways to ensure you remember that information later on. So the idea is to allow your brain to forget some of the information. So we're not just mindlessly recalling the case facts, but we're actually using some brain power. And the more brain power we use, the more we've actually forgotten that information and therefore the harder our brain has to work and therefore if we can actually recall that information the more deeply encoded it becomes within our minds. When I was in my first year of university and I was studying for my law exams the process I used was to chunk up the day and I think this is something that a lot of law students still do. I would for instance go at 9am I'm going to look at contract law at 10am, criminal law at 11am, constitutional law and so on and so forth. And I soon realised that I wasn't actually memorising anything because I wasn't giving my brain enough time to forget the information. So in my second year, I fully embraced this concept of space repetition, where I would take a topic and I would look at a few cases and I would review them periodically throughout the first day. So at 9am, 12pm and 3pm, I would review that set of cases and I would actively recalled them throughout the first day. Then I would wait a 24 hour period to recall them again, then three days and increasingly spaced out periods of time. So I'm giving my brain a little bit more time to forget those particular pieces of knowledge and those case facts so that when I recalled them again, I was using more brain power and therefore entrenching that information into my long term memory. This sounds like a very tiring process, but fortunately, there are two excellent systems of review that you can use to make this an easy and enjoyable process. The first is the lightness system and the second is an advanced scheduling algorithm. Now I personally started off using the lightness system in my second year and then in my third year I upgraded to using an advanced scheduling algorithm. With the lightness system all you need is five different boxes of piles which contain a set of blank cards. And these cards essentially operate as simple flashcards where on one side you're going to put the case name and on the back side you're going to put the case facts. Case information should only contain three bullet points. You need one bullet point on the case facts, a second bullet point on the judgment from the case and a third bullet point on the applicable law. If you put any information than that, you're just not going to remember it, so don't even bother trying. At first, all of your cards are going to be in box one, and you're going to go through them like normal flashcards, you're going to see the case name, you're going to try and recall the three bullet points on the back of the card. If you get that right, you can move that card from box one to box two, and similarly, if it's in box two, you can move that to box three. So every time you get the card right, it graduates to the next box along. And the important point is that each of these boxes represent different time intervals. So if the cards are in box one, you know that you want to review these cases every single day. If they're in box two, you're going to want to review it every other day, box three maybe every week, and so on and so forth. It's completely up to you how you set these time intervals. But What's eventually happening is, is that you're getting the space out so much that you're giving your brain enough time to forget the information, which is allowing you to more deeply ingrain and encode that information into your long term memory. However, if you get any of the information wrong, that card then has to be shoved straight back into box one. So you get to a stage where eventually you have a graduated system of cards where all the cards in box one are the sort of cards or the sort of cases where you're not too sure about them and you know you have to give them particular focus. Whereas those cards in box four or box five are pretty well entrenched in your mind and so there's not really much point you're looking at them much more than once a month or once every two months. Now the beauty of this method is that you end up studying a lot more efficiently. As I just alluded to, you will end up spending more time focusing on the cases that you're struggling with rather than those that you're pretty confident with. 
But the downside is, is that it can become pretty messy, especially if you don't have a proper organized way to put them into nice boxes or nice piles. And this is where an advanced scheduling algorithm comes in handy. And in particular, this is where an app like Anki is super useful. Anki is an app for mobile and desktop devices, which uses a slightly modified version of the SM2 algorithm, which allows you to implement your own flashcards, but then spaces out your learning based on a user-determined difficulty rating. So for instance, if you're going through your legal cases, you'll get given the case name and you'll have to think of the case facts and you can tap the screen and it will give you those facts. And if you found it particularly easy, you can click easy. If you found it a little bit difficult, you can press hard and so on and so forth. And through that information, it uses their algorithms to determine how long it should be before you see that case again. Prior to using Anki, it was really easy for me to focus my learning on those cases that I found particularly enjoyable or interesting. But Anki would force me to look at those cases that I was particularly weak at. It would dredge up the cases that I had struggled with before and force me to go through them time and time again until I was a pro. And this whole process ensured that the performance per unit time of study was significantly enhanced. So I wasn't really wasting my time looking at stuff I already knew. So whereas in my first year, I'd be pulling out my hair, trying to identify the relevant legal cases that I could use to answer a particular question, this whole process of space repetition ensured I had abundance of legal evidence when it came to answering questions. But it was not only that, I also found I had a lot more time on my hands. I was studying more efficiently, which meant I had more time to relax and enjoy the process. And so I guess this is really the crux of the video itself. Sure, memorizing all the law cases is great, but being at university also means enjoying the process. And you can do this by simply embracing spaced repetition and understanding the forgetting curve. So by using something like the Lightness system or an advanced scheduling algorithm to ensure that you're spacing out your learning over time, you're able to more deeply ingrain your knowledge of different legal cases and be able to recall them much quicker when it comes to the exam. If you want to read more about this, I will link all the studies and all the extra reading below so you can check it out. I really hope you found the video useful and if you have any questions at all, then please leave a comment below and I'll get straight back to you. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and I shall see you in the next video. Best of luck with those legal cases. Bye bye.